What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Edward and on Instagram I go by Trail Ready Forerunner. Welcome. All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over the most asked question I always get about my Forerunner and it's what type of headlight do you have and who retrofitted them for you? So in my case, I did it myself. All right, so before we get started putting this whole thing together, I wanna to go over a couple of things. So this projector you could get on Amazon, right? And it's fairly inexpensive. Now, it comes with this shroud. There's nothing wrong with the shroud. If you wanna save some money, you can literally screw this shroud onto the projector and you're done. The only thing that I dislike about this, and the first time I did my retrofit, I did it like this. I had this on, I put it in the housing, painted it, sealed it all up, but I didn't like how small this shroud is. So in the housing, so it would look like this. So it's kind of small compared to the actual headlight. If you want it to look a little fuller inside, you go ahead and pick up the bigger shroud. So the shroud is your choice, right? Like you can get any shroud you want. Go ahead and go onto the retrofit source and pick out the look you want. And so what you do is if you don't want to use this, take this off on the list. I told you guys to pick up this ring, which is a centric ring. And what this does is it goes inside the shroud and it clips in. Once it clips in, this ring fits perfectly around the projector. So once you put it on the sh on the shroud, put, put the whole thing on here and it should be a really snug fit. I just line it up perfectly with the edge of its own plastic. And that's how it sits. So what that shroud does is it prevents this thing from like flopping everywhere. That centric ring holds this thing perfectly straight. If not, it's going to move on you when you when you try to glue it. It's going to it's going to pivot and move and it's going to come out crooked. The other option if you want to be stubborn and not buy that $10 ring, you can technically take this shroud, screw it together, take this and put it on top. And so it looks like this. Here's the thing though, you're gonna have to put a bunch of JB Weld inside of here and then sit this on top and then pressure it so that it glues together. It's not that hard and you can do it. I actually did it this way the first time. I wasn't sure about the centric rings if they were gonna work or not. So I did it this way and I glued the crap out of it and it's stuck. I mean, I haven't had any issues, but this will help you a lot. All right, let's talk about the headlights now. These are not OEM. These are the TYC brand off Amazon, roughly about 40 bucks. Now, if you already have a 99 Forerunner with the clear lens, I would use those. I wouldn't go ahead and buy these. Like there's no reason to. So, Use your own OEM ones and you'll be perfectly fine. It's the exact same steps as you would if you bought brand new ones. Now I've had mine for about three years now and I haven't had any issues with them. So I kind of recommend these. I mean, they're not OEM and I know a lot of people stick to OEM and OEM only. They do come with a bulb inside, but just disregard that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the angel eyes or the halos or whatever you want to call them. So you can get some really expensive angel eyes on the retrofit source that will flash or colors, whatever. These are some basic ones that work perfectly fine from Amazon. So this smaller 80 millimeter one is about $11. This one's $12. And the reason why there's two and of course, this totally depends on what shroud you get. So the reason why I get two 
and I don't use this plastic ring, what you do is you softly What you want to do is you softly pull pull the wires, don't pull them off the There you go. So you pull the wires off and you only use this part of it. Um Depending on some, this one's yellow for some reason i believe mine on my car is white but i think this my light is red the halo is red this is a white light but it has a yellow ring if it really bothers you um look for what the halos that are white or whatever color you want so the small one sits in the front. So that's your angel eye right there. It sits in the front. And the way we're gonna mount this, so if you look on the tools and supplies list, I included picture wire. And what you do is you take the wire and you unthread it and they're little strands that make up this pretty thick line. And with the little strands, what we're gonna do is drill out i like to put four tie down points so we're going to drill out small holes on the edge of the shroud that way we can wrap the wire around and tie it in the back and you can see them visually if you look really close at at the actual projector but when you step back a little bit, they're so thin, you're not gonna really see them. If it bothers you, don't put an angel eye on. You can try gluing this together, but I'd rather have the safety of the wire just holding it in place, but this is your call. Now the larger one goes in the back. And what the larger one does is it shines through and it makes this outer ring glow and then these side pieces glow. And again, you can you be creative, pick whatever color you want. I went on I went white on white. Now let's talk about what type of bulb you should put in here. LED versus HID. I've only ran HID even though they are a little bit more maintenance. Sometimes you get bad L HIDs. In this scenario, I would spend most of your money on your light bulbs, just because I've gone through countless amount of HIDs through Amazon that I don't even buy them there anymore. I got my set from the retrofit source and they were a little pricey, but I've only had minor issues with them. I've never tried LEDs, but I'll probably do it in the future when these go out. But this is definitely up to you guys what you want to use. All right, now that you guys have a rough idea of what we're going to get into, let's go ahead and preset the oven to 270. While that's getting preheated, what we're going to do is prep this light. So a lot of people, what they do is they'll take this rubber boot off, definitely take the light bulb out. held in by a screw. Some people recommend taking off this plastic housing. I honestly le left mine on. What I do take off is these metal tabs here and they're super simple to take off. All you need is a screwdriver and you can literally pry them softly and they come off, super simple. So take all of them, all four of them off. And I'm missing one. 
Of course. <laughs> Take that off and we're good to go. Now we're gonna get the cooking sheet ready and throw some aluminum foil on top just in case like some little tab melts and it gets on the cooking sheet. We don't wanna root. We don't wanna get the wife or the mother mad just cause we're using their supplies. But <laughs> throw the aluminum foil down, put this on top and then just slide it into the oven. We're gonna leave it in there for about seven minutes. And we don't wanna get this thing scorching hot. We just wanna get it hot enough to where the adhesive that's on this edge is nice and soft. So what we're gonna do is throw it in there, leave it in there. Once the timer hits, check it out. So what we wanna do is take it out of the oven Use your butter knife. You can use a screwdriver, but be very careful because they have sharp edges and you don't want to crack the glass. So you got to be very careful when you're doing this. I like using a butter knife because it doesn't have sharp edges. So we're going to preheat the oven to... ...275. While that's getting ready, We're gonna get our aluminum foil on the cooking sheet. All right, so we're gonna put it in for about seven minutes and then come back and check to see if all the glue has melted and we're able to pry the glass off the housing. All right, let's see if this thing is ready to come out. All right, I put these cooking pads or whatever down so I can lay it down and not worry about it hitting the metal. Now we're gonna take our butter knife, which is Super helpful because it won't crack like a screwdriver will. This is glass, so you got to be very careful when you're prying. Now you can leave this in there for seven minutes. You could go all the way up to 10 minutes, depending on how, you know, stubborn your glue is. But what you want to do is start prying it. Remember, this is hot, wear gloves. Start prying it slowly. And see how, it should be this easy. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to force, look at, that's coming apart really easy. You shouldn't have to, have to force it. So it should come up that easy. I got glue all over. Look at that. Perfect. So if you're having difficult prying this open, throw it back in the oven for another minute or two, take it out, try to pry it, and then just repeat the process. And then try not to get glue in here. Well, we're pretty much done. Got that off? I mean, it's super simple. Now what we wanna do is finish removing these screws. And then from this side, you can pinch the metal of these, of these legs here. Put it closer so you guys can see. So you can see those legs, pinch them, and then it comes right out. Now what we're gonna do is tape off the glued area, get these ready for paint. 
Give the headlights a light sanding with 120 grit sandpaper just so that the paint can stick. Give it a coat or two of primer and then once that dries, go ahead and give it about two to three coats of paint. The paint is subjective depending on what style you want. Uh, I went with semi-gloss black. So next we're gonna get into putting the shroud, halo, and back halo light together. So as of right now, we gotta take the projector away from the housing. This is the halo. It has a disconnect here, which is nice because we're gonna have to drill a hole at the bottom of the light or at the top, depending on where you want to put it. I don't think it really matters. Um, let's try to do it on the top. That way when people are looking at your car, they won't see it. But the good thing is this style halo has this quick disconnect here. The other ones aren't like this and this wire is connected here so it doesn't have a disconnect. So you can't drill this big of a hole. So this is kind of convenient. If not, you would have to notch it here in order to make this work. But let's get into it. So if you look underneath, there's gonna be a tab up here and we don't wanna drill up there cause then we're gonna hit this tab and break it. So we're gonna drill on the top, which doesn't have a tab. We are gonna have to drill through this uh, plastic ring. So it's probably best if you just attach it inside and then drill your hole. So first we're gonna, if you have a punch, use your punch of course. Unfortunately, my punch broke. So I'm just gonna use a nail and a hammer. All, the only reason why we're doing this is so that our drill bit doesn't skip. So go ahead, try to get it in the middle. Not only in the middle of here, but here as well. Seems about right. There's our hole punch. Now we can get our 5 sixteenths drill bit. And as you can see, the diameter is pretty close. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to go, so if you look at the hole, you don't want to go past this lip because then if you go higher up here, you're going to be able to see it because the halo when it sits down, you're going to be able to see this lip. So don't drill above this hole, this lip right here, drill inside of it so that this can go inside. I'd get like a little chisel or something to kind of elongate this hole. Or what you could do is just take the drill bit, put it inside the same hole, and then elongate it by moving it side to side, just a little bit. So that should have made the hole an oval. Now we're able to push this through hopefully. Go ahead and use something like this, that's smaller. So not only do you have to make it through the hole, you have to make it through this other plastic piece. So there it goes. We are in, boom. So now you're not gonna see those wires in the back. Now it sits flush, we're good to go. Now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is start drilling some small holes. Remember we talked about fishing some uh, picture wire through. All right, so one thing that I tried to fix and I couldn't get a hold of, but this ring is yellow. It's a white light, but for some reason, I went to two different manufacturers 
and both of them had yellow rings for their white lights. If you go with a different color, they'll come in white, which is super, super weird. I don't know why they don't just make them all white. Um, if you if you want white and the yellow really bothers you, there's two options you can do. Is you could put this ring back on the halo, but it's kind of big. I mean, if it's pushed in, it'd be a little smaller, but it's kind of big. And if you like that style, you can go ahead and do it this way and attach this plastic. I also bought a different set of halos, which is this one, which is a white ring which is nice, but it's also very big. So it's your choice. You can do this, this, or the way I do it is normally without this plastic piece, but that's totally up to you. All right, get your picture frame wire. This, you don't have to be precise, just cut a chunk off. So, these now come with like a plastic liner, which I had no idea it did. We're gonna have to take that off. If you do buy the picture frame wire, try to get the one without this plastic sleeve because it's just a pain in the butt to get out, but not impossible. All right. There we go, now we got bare wire. Now just untwist it, pull out one wire. There it is. Try to straighten it out as much as you can. So this will now hold this down. And see, it's really hard to see, I mean, if you look closely, you can see it, but from further away, it's really hard to even notice. If you don't want to do that way, you can glue this down. Um, that's up to you guys. All right, now what we're gonna do is drill the, f the holes on the side to put the wire in. And so the hole can be super tiny. So grab the smallest drill bit you have, which in my case might be 116. It's right on the edge. Two. And then on this side. We take our drill bit. And a trick you can use is um, if it's right on the edge, use your, your finger, but press down really slowly. Don't go all fast, you're gonna cut your finger. But use your finger to guide the hole, the drill bit in the hole. Go slow. All right, now take your single wire, flip this around, pull it nice and tight. It should, sorry, I'm trying to do this on camera, it's a pain. All right, there it is. So that's in. Now to tighten it, all we're gonna do is take the two ends and twist them. So here we got the two ends. And what we wanna do is twist them 
really tight. Um, we don't need to make a knot or anything. The twisting will actually hold it together very well. Um, and the more you twist it, the tighter it gets and the less likely it will come undone. So, see how it looks? It's really woven together. And it, it, we could tuck it in in this groove right here. So make sure they're really tight. Both of them are really tight. And just tuck it into that groove and you're good to go. I mean, there's probably other methods to do this. I'm not a pro. I'm just showing you guys how I was taught to make these. So hopefully this helps uh, make sure it's centered. All right, that's pretty good. You can put more wire if you think if you think this is gonna move, you go feel free to put one up here and one over here to like center it even more. And if you really are want this like perfect, you could fill this hole in with uh, some type of epoxy and then color it black so you don't see these, but I don't think you're gonna be able to see them. Okay, so you are gonna be able to see them but I mean, you really gotta be looking for it. So it's right here if you can kind of tell. But since it's going on top, on top, the only way you're gonna be able to see it is if you kind of crouch underneath the car and look up in. All right, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, now for the next step is to get the inner light inside. Make sure it's this wire is inside before you push down on it. And depending on the halo you get will depend on, you know, how deep it goes. Now we're going to attach this one by just putting a little bit of epoxy at the top and the bottom. I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom ring just to kind of secure it in place, but I don't want to put too much on here. You could put more if you want to. Um, I just don't know if the person that's going to buy this wants yellow. So, all right, put some on there. Now I'm going to put some on the top and the bottom of this thing. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now on this side. So the good thing is if you just put a little bit, now just kind of let it sit and it should dry up in about five minutes. Once that's done, what you could do right now is if you want to glue your projector to the shroud, you can do it if you want. All you would do is you would put a little bit of epoxy I would just put a little bit, a smooth amount on here and on the other side, like the flat side, and then press it in. Um, do that right away so that, you know, it doesn't dry on you. Hardens, we can go ahead, put the projector in if you didn't already, and move to the next step, which is connecting this whole unit onto the housing with this screw here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so first we're gonna take the tape off and then start assembling the projector inside. I like to keep a microfiber around and kind of clean off, make sure there's nothing that fell inside. I also use an air compressor and I blow out just to make sure there's no small little particles in there. All right, so we're gonna work on getting this back part of the projector off. Just use a Phillips screwdriver. All 
All right, now that we got that off, go ahead and unscrew this bolt. All right, here are all the parts that you're gonna need. And all this is is like washers to keep any humidity out of the housing. So we got two plastic washers. This little clip holds a bulb in. And we got two metal washers. And if you already went ahead and glued this together, obviously you skipped a step. All right, and make sure that this top line and this line are level. And then you also have to realize, since we did drill our hole at the top, the projector has a top on it. If you put it backwards, your line that the projector gives is gonna be upside down. So make sure not to mess this up. So what you wanna do is you wanna put this washer in first and it goes face down with the curved part facing the bulb. That's just gonna create a seal. So we're gonna take this, make sure we know where the top is at. And then we get the top of the housing, put it right side up. <clears throat> Right now it would be smart to connect this guy right here. Here's the cable, the quick connect. And this goes, we're gonna put it, there's already a small hole drilled in your housing. So go ahead. All right, so just kind of slide them in and it should fit perfect. All right, we're in. <clears throat> now get them close and connect them. All right, so once you got that guy in there, go ahead and just feed this through the main hole and then feed the whole projector. Make sure this is a top. And as you're putting it in, go ahead and pull them through the back. Make sure you got all of them. Should look something like that. Kind of just pull them a little bit, make sure they're they're tight. All right, next you're gonna get this guy. And then it goes like this. There's a groove on the headlight, which will make you, which will make it sit perfect. With the groove is up here. And then you wanna, once you put that in, double check. And it should align your projector perfectly. So got that one in. And you go ahead. And to be completely honest, I don't know where this guy goes. It could go underneath. Um, I'm not 100% sure because there's no instructions on, on how to install this, but I'm pretty sure this is the way it goes. And then this tab has a little notch in it, same as the other one, push that down. And then you get your bolt. And if I'm doing this wrong and you know like how this thing goes, definitely comment down below and I'll try to flag it so that other people can find it. Um, just so that we're all on the same page. I don't try to act like I know everything. I'm just, I'm trying my best here, guys. All right, so just tighten this bolt. And it doesn't have to be super tight. But just tighten it as much as you can. And the tighter it is, of course, the less it will vibrate when you're driving. So 
get it pretty snug it doesn't you know don't break the damn thing alright that's better see it's not really shaking alright we got that down alright now we're gonna put this guy back and same thing it has a groove where it fits in the in, in its notch and all this is is so that you can put this which levers down and it holds your bulb into place so get your screws all right once those are tight you can uh, you can go ahead and put your bulb in. Um, one thing to remember is depending on what you go with, either HID or LED, um, you will HID. I don't think you'll be able to use the rubber housing, which seals this. I've never had any issues without putting this back, but if you want to put this back and you got a small enough LED that fits in here, just run everything in here, all of them, and then just put it in and it should work fine. All right. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much all the steps. Now you can go ahead the final step is to put the house, the glass on top, take this to the oven, preheat the oven again, leave it in there for like three to five minutes, just so that this gets nice and hot. Once it's, once this glue is warm and the glass is on top, you'll be able to press the glass into the housing and just set this aside for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or less. So it's cold to the touch and you're all done. You, you could pretty much install this now. Um, just for the purpose of the video, I'm going to go over the wiring and how it works. So this wire with the quick disconnect, it's inside. This one goes to the small halo in the front, right? So this one goes here. And what I have this one connected to, and this is up to you guys. Like you guys can connect these any way you want. If you guys want them both on at the same time and you don't want to have a dedicated switch, you can connect black, black, red, red together and connect both of these to your corner lights. So the light that sits yeah it sits right here so the corner light that sits right here you can tap into that light and connect these both this cable right here is for your high beams so when you click your high beam what happens is that there's an elec this electronic will open the flap that gives you the cut in the light and it opens so your beam shines higher. So you're gonna need a, an adapter that goes from here to your stock plug and that will activate this guy here. So the way this guy goes, the, these hooks go into the, this, these holes right here. And then once your bulb is in there, you'll go ahead and push down and then latch them on. So it should look as something like this. And all it's doing is pushing down so that the bulb doesn't move. All right guys, that's pretty much it. I know this video was super long. Um, <laughs> 
and I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this video to come out. I apologize. It this video has taken me geez months to put together. But I'm happy it's finally done. I really hope a lot of you guys can take advantage of creating your own retrofits. Um, it's an easy project. And it's on a budget. So you guys can either do it this way or pay. There's people online that create some really crazy custom ones. If you want to go that route, you're going to pay, you know, for what you get, which is a better projector, um, better LED halos. So there's a lot of options out there, but this is a budget option for those of you that just don't want to spend the money to have a custom built one. But I hope you guys learned a couple things. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. You can also check out my website. I'll have a short kind of written description on all the steps, but I hope this helps somebody out there. That's all for this one, guys. Peace out.